Hey everybody, this is Rust Metro Game Core. This here is the Ambernic RG353M. And one of my favorite aspects of this device is that it is one of the first smaller budget handhelds that have hall sensor analog sticks. And these sticks are excellent. Not only do they have a very good smooth glide to them, but they've also updated the cap here to have a nice grippiness as well. In fact, when it comes to retro handhelds that are under $150, these are easily the best analog sticks I've used to date. And this is also one of the reasons why this Ambernic RG353M is one of my favorite devices of the year. In fact, these sticks are so good that some people have been asking whether or not they can be used in other devices. In particular, I've heard that they are a drop-in replacement for the Retroid Pocket 3 and the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. Now this device has similar switch style analog sticks, but they are not hall sensors and they're a little bit small as well. The cap that they're using on this device is both thinner when it comes to width and height. And so in this video, we're going to do just that. We're going to remove the stick from the RG353M and put it in the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. And before we get too far into it here, I'll give you a quick spoiler and that the results are somewhat mixed. Either way, let's take a second here and go ahead and figure out whether or not it's going to be worth it to make the upgrade. Now, first things first, you're not going to need to cannibalize an RG353M. On the official Ambernic store on AliExpress, they have these joysticks available in their console parts section. Now, unfortunately, they are currently sold out, but I'll leave a link here to this page so you can check their availability. And it's going to cost you $11 each for these joysticks, but it does come with free shipping. To start, let's go ahead and tear down the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. Now, these four outer screws right here are using a T5 Torx screw. And so I would recommend using a precision screwdriver set. I'll leave a link to my favorite kit in the video description below. Now once you have the screws out, you'll want to unfasten the device itself. To do that, you're going to want to take a guitar pick and slide it behind your shoulder buttons. Once it's inside, just go ahead and twist it a little bit to unclip that section. From there, you can run the pick around the rest of the device and the clip should come off free. Next, we're going to remove the metal heat sink. Now this is going to be using a Phillips head screw and everything else from here will be Phillips as well. You're only going to want to remove the four larger screws on the outside of the heat sink here. After that, you can go ahead and pull that off and we're almost done. Now, if you'd like, you can remove the battery cable right here, but because we're only messing with the joystick, I don't think it's necessary. Next, you'll want to remove the ribbon cable right here by unlatching it and pulling it free. Just make sure to be gentle during that process. After that, we have two small Phillips head screws. We can remove those and out comes the joystick. And this is it right here, pretty easy to remove. Now, there's a little plastic casing around the joystick. You're going to need to remove that as well. It just slides right out. Okay, let's just test one joystick at a time. So let's start opening up the RG353M next. Now this one also uses Torx screws, but uses a T6 size screw instead. Again, this is where a precision screwdriver kit is gonna come in handy. The RG353M doesn't have any clips, so it's very easy to remove. But for this one, you are gonna wanna remove the battery, which is attached to the back cover. Now to access the joysticks on the 353M, you will have to remove the speakers. And these just have a small piece of adhesive that are keeping them together. So you just kind of want to pop it right off. From here, it's going to be the same process. We're going to want to unlatch the ribbon cable, then gently remove it. And same thing here, we have two Phillips screws that are holding the joystick in place. And from there, it can just slide right out. There's no plastic enclosure or anything. And so here's a comparison of these two joysticks. As you can see, the 353M1 has a much larger cap to it, but other than that, they're very close to being identical. The ribbon cable's in the exact same spot, same thing with the screw holes. And so yes, indeed, this will be a drop-in replacement for the two. Now, if you were to try to just add the analog stick just like this without the plastic covering, you can see that it's not gonna fit in place. And so we are gonna need to use that little mount right here. And honestly, this is probably the trickiest part of the whole installation. You have to shove that cap through this little plastic case. And the key here is to make sure that you do it completely dead on and try it a few times. You will have to use some force, but you can get it through. Anyway, once you have it through, you're probably gonna immediately observe the fact that this is gonna be a pretty tight fit here with that larger cap and the smaller enclosure. Additionally, it seems like the joystick can't go fully into the enclosure either. So not quite a perfect fit, but let's go ahead and add the enclosure to the board and then we'll screw it in. So next we're gonna reattach the ribbon cable, be extra careful right here. And if you have plastic tweezers, I would use those as well. And so here you can see we have the hall sensor stick on the right side and then the regular Retroid Pocket 3 Plus one still on the left. And already, before I put this together, I can already tell that there's going to be limited movement with the 353M stick. The cap here is just too big for the radius that we have to move things around, and it also doesn't seem to stick up as high from the case as the original one in the Retroid Pocket 3. And so overall, I think we're going to have limited mobility, but let's test it either way. 
Now I want to get a good comparison between the two, so I'm actually going to fully assemble the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus here and then do some testing before we put the second analog stick in. And so assembling this is exactly the opposite of what we just did. So we'll add the heatsink right here with those four screws. And then we'll go ahead and pop the case back in as well. The only tricky part here is to make sure the SD card slot covering thing here is unlatched. That's going to make it a lot easier to push the case together. Other than that, all the clips are just going to kind of go into place and you're good to go. And so here we are with mismatch sticks here. We're going to boot into the device and test the gamepad. We're going to use the gamepad tester app here. It's free on the Google Play Store. And within here, we're going to go into the analog dead zone section. And this will allow us to move these sticks around and see what kind of coverage we're going to get. And right off the bat, you can see that the Retroid Pocket 3 stick works perfectly. When you're not using it, it is centered nicely and you can hit all of the analog quadrants as well. Meanwhile, you can see from the red dot on the 353M that it is off center right here. Not only that, when we try to move it around, we are limited in our movement. We can't hit all of the four different corners. Now, luckily within the Retroid firmware build, there is an option to calibrate the controller. So we're gonna go into handheld settings and then input. And then under input control, there's a section for calibrating the joystick. Now this is unique. What you're supposed to do here is you're supposed to push it to one side when it gives you the prompt. And once you push it to one side, it's supposed to snap back to the center. But as you can see with the 353M joystick, it actually doesn't register when you push it all the way down and then snap it back up. And so what you have to do is really push it against the side so that the rubber is actually pushing against the side of the joystick holder. And even then when it snaps back, you have to kind of nudge it back in the opposite direction just to register. And so even then when calibrating the joystick, it's not quite a perfect process. Alternatively, when you use the regular Retroid Pocket 3 Plus joystick, it works just fine. Anyway, now that we've recalibrated our joysticks, let's go ahead and test them again. As you can see, it is a little bit centered on the right stick, and I am able to get a little bit closer to the corners on the right side. But even then, it still doesn't naturally go to the corners. Now, if I really mash it in, I can kind of squeeze over to the corner, but that's definitely not something you would actually be able to do while playing a game. And so unfortunately, in this case right here, we do have a limited range of movement with the 353M stick. So now let's actually test that in a gaming scenario. Again, I'm using the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus stick here on the left and then the 353 M1 on the right. And here I'm playing Time Splitters 2 on the gamepad and it's kind of a mismatched experience. The Retroid Pocket 3 joystick is very responsive. It's a little bit light feeling in the hand and I just wish it was a little bit bigger. Meanwhile, the 353 M stick feels a little bit sluggish. It definitely doesn't have that same smooth glide that we have when it's actually in the 353 M device. Instead, it feels like the joystick is bumping up against the edges of its holster. Not only that, it feels too recessed into the case. In fact, if it was only maybe two millimeters higher, I think we wouldn't have any of these issues at all. But as it stands right now, the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus case is kind of a perfect storm. Not only is the movement limited in the edges, but it's also too recessed to be able to clear those edges of the case. Now, just because I'm a glutton for punishment and because I like to be thorough, let's go ahead and swap out the other stick for the 353 M1 as well. And the process is going to be the exact same as we just showed. And so here we are with both Hall Sensor sticks installed on the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. We're going to go ahead and run through the joystick calibration again. And again, this is kind of a pain in the butt to do. And then we'll test the dead zones. As you can see here on the left one, it's actually on center, but it still has some limited movement on the inner corners. Meanwhile, the right analog stick remains off center. And like before, I can reach those corners, but I really have to mash it to make that work. And so yeah, it's really kind of hard to articulate what's happening here, but it just doesn't feel as smooth as it does on the 353M. And the movements here feel a little bit too responsive when you're just nudging it. And then they're not responsive enough at the outer edges of the stick. Now it's pretty easy to adjust the dead zones here. Again, it's gonna be under the input control section. And so here I'm gonna increase the dead zone radius to 25%. And by doing that, yes, it removes some of that hypersensitivity when you're just nudging the stick a little bit. But again, we're still limited in that full range of motion on each of these sides. And so overall, I would say that these sticks feel like they're just a little bit imbalanced. I feel like the window of movement within these sticks is just too narrow. And so to summarize as best as I can, it's basically like the stick just doesn't have a lot of movement and the movement happens very quickly. And so overall, that smooth gliding feel that you get on the RG353M just isn't present here on the Retroid Pocket 3. In fact, I would say it's a less pleasant experience than just the regular Retroid Pocket 3 sticks. And so if anything, I would call this a side grade instead of an upgrade. 
This might be something you could be interested in if you are very fearful of having some joystick drift over time, but when it comes down to the nuts and bolts of actually using this analog stick, I find that it is actually a worse experience than the stock ones. Now I would say this is only one person's opinion, so take it with a grain of salt because there might be other people who actually find this to be an improvement. Personally, I think it's just a very limited range of motion right now. Now there could be some other solutions out there, for example you could rip these caps off and put on something smaller. But I'm pretty sure that's going to permanently damage the 353M sticks and these are pretty special to me and so I don't really want to do that. Either way, my point here was to show that yes, these sticks are a drop-in replacement for the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, but unless you want to try to take it to another level and do some more experimenting, I don't think it's going to be the upgrade you're thinking it is. And so in the end, after doing all these changes here, I decided to put them back into my 353M. These analog sticks are an excellent fit for this particular case. And so I think these might be a good replacement for other cases like with the Ambernic RG505. But for now, when it comes to the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, as well as the AYN Odin devices, which use the same configuration, unfortunately, I don't think the 350M sticks are an upgrade right now. And so yes, it's kind of a bummer because I was hoping this would be a big improvement, but at the very least, we've at least narrowed down our options. And so let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this an upgrade you're thinking about doing, or should we wait for something else? As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.